Hello and welcome to the Two Man Power Trip of Wrestling. I'm your host, JP John. Pause with me today. Very special guest, former NWA World Heavyweight Champion, NWA National Champion, two time OVW Tag Team Champion. He is the Dane Event, Jax Dane. Jax, welcome back to the Two hey, Man Power Trip. Thanks for having me, but I just want to stop you right there. Yep. Um, you got some of the credentials right, but you left a little bit off there. So let me get through them real quick. Yes. Um, national Heavyweight Champion, current. Yep. The NWA, former NWA world champ, former North American champ, former NWA Texas champ, former NWA world tag team champs. And you can throw the OVW titles in there as well with my former partner, former best friend, Crimson um, Mayweather. Uh, so, you know, it's pretty important to get those NWA titles right. Grand Slam champion. And uh, we don't want to lose that. Yeah, that's right. That's true. So what it's been up. Like, what have you been up to? What's going on in your world? Oh, man, just preparing. Big, big event coming up June 11th. Always ready, Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, you know, Chris Adonis, one of the best, biggest, strongest, fastest, most powerful professional wrestlers in the world. And for the first time, he gets to climb into the ring and test himself against somebody that's a little bit bigger, a little bit better, a little bit stronger. And uh, he gets to compete in the Dane event. Yes, I mean, it's a huge show, obviously, coming up for the NWA, you know, being the national champion. Obviously, you're playing a big part of it. Adonis wants his title back. What do you think about your place in the no, NWA? No, hold on, hold on. Adonis doesn't want his title back. Right. Adonis wants my title. Right, true. That's, you know, for the first time in the history of the NWA, it's harder to win the national title than it is the world title. Um, so he wants my title. With that being said, though, like, what do you think about the matchup? I know it's some guy bigger, but what do you think about like the placement of the card where you guys are? It, it does seem like uh, you know you guys are uh, top tier. <laughs> yeah, man, but it doesn't matter where they put us on the card, man. The main event—that's where the money's at. So uh, it doesn't matter if we we're on first or we're on last. It's um, you know the main event is the most important spot on the event. Where did that come from, the Dane event? Did you always have that within you? Like, it, where did that come from, Old Because the last time I spoke to you, you know, I saw glimpses of it, but not not, not like this. It seems like um, you found, like, inner you, maybe. Well, I mean, you know, at some point in your career, um, you realize that it has to be all about you in professional wrestling. I hugged a lot of babies. I shook a lot of hands. Did a lot of the charity work, you know, trying to scratch and claw and find my way to the top. But I just kept feeling like no matter what I did, that I would be a little bit overlooked. So I just decided it was stop pretending to be something I'm not and start being who I really am. So that is exactly where the Dane event came from. Was it always in you, though? Like, was it like dying to come out? Oh, absolutely. I mean, but you... You, you, you're playing, I feel like in, in a lot of times in professional wrestling, you're playing chess with a bunch of guys that are playing checkers. And, and I was just trying to, to play the role that was asked of me and do what's asked of you and, you know, just be a good soldier and go do what, what we need you to do. And then at some point I just decided that I was going to stop fucking doing that and do it my way. And um, it seems to be working out pretty well for me. Oh, yeah. For sure. What about the look? You know, sometimes you got the vest, or like, you know, the jacket. What about the look? Where did that come from? Just who I am. What do you mean, where did it come from? It's what I wake up every day and do. It's just, it's not the look. It's, I mean, I'm, I'm not it's playing a look for you, anymore. The old vest was a, was a look. The furs, the glasses, the cars, that's who I really am. So, I mean, it didn't come from anywhere. It's just always been there. I remember the old, you know, the old fest you had. Yeah, I mean, you know, play the role. Do what they ask. With NWA, with the NWA, like, what are your thoughts on Billy Corgan and working for Billy and his control and his direction for the NWA? Well, it's, it's obvious that he can't control me. I'm doing it my way this time. So um, as long as Billy Corgan stays out of my way, and um, continues to sign my check, we'll be in good good standing. If things change, we won't be in good standing. What about your old buddy, 
Anthony Mayweather, a.k.a. Crimson. Like, what happened there? He's retired. I retired. I put him on the shelf. He's gone. Have you seen him? No. Okay. What happened there? I beat him, and he left. But, like, what happened to the relationship? Because you guys used to be traveling the world together, best buddies. Like I, I told you I was playing a role. I mean, that's who that guy was. Do what you got to do to get where you got to get. And he continuously let me down, whether it was World Tag Team title shots, whether it was Impact title shots. He just never could fill the role, fill the shoes that I needed filled. So I had to eliminate that. Where do you think he is? You just think he, he went off and he's going to do his own thing? He's retired? He's never coming back? Who knows? I don't talk to him. You probably talk to him more than I do. As a matter of fact, if you want to know what he's doing, why don't you reach out to him and, and put him on your podcast if you think he'll draw ratings for you. That's a good point. Maybe I should. see. Maybe I'll check in and see if he really is retired. Yeah, we, we haven't seen him in a while. You're right. Since you, uh, since you beat him, yeah. Yeah. Since I handedly beat him. I think it was like 13, 14 seconds I beat him in from bell to finish. Yeah, I think it was between 15 and 30 seconds, something like yeah. that. It was it was a short match, yeah. As, as long as I wanted it to be. Let's not right. forget that. A prey, a predator stalking his prey. So what's what do you got on the horizon next? I know obviously the pay-per-view, but what's what else is in your sights? Oh, man, just um, continuing to dominate the entire roster at the NWA like I'm doing right now. That's – that's uh, you've seen they've turned the Saturday show over to me. They don't even call it NWA USA anymore. They just call it the Dana Vid on Saturdays. So just continuing to, to do what I've been doing and dominating every time I step in the room. What do you think about just the NWA in general and where it's at right now? Like, do you – do you guys, you know, you want to be a national exposure as far as like TV or streaming or like, what do you think about NWA and, and its position in the wrestling world? Well, I think we're in a good spot because I'm on the roster. I mean, that's the number one um, go to there. Uh, number two, I don't really care about the exposure or where we are, or what we're doing. As long as Billy Corgan keeps signing my checks, I'll keep showing up to wrestle. For me, it's just about making money. I'm a prize fighter. So continue to pay me my fee, and I'll continue to be on your team. What about just in general uh, of NWA? Where do you think, like, do you need to do something? Because I know it's like Fight TV and pay-per-views and stuff, but what about national, like, uh, expansion, if you will? Uh, I mean, I, obviously, I would love to see us um, land a national TV deal. Uh, it's, it's apparent that our roster is talented enough to compete at that level with any company that's out there. Uh, our champions are fantastic. Our wrestlers are fantastic. And, and again, it goes back to they have me on the roster. So, I mean, you tie that in with the nostalgia and the history and the legends that continue to pop up on our events from Austin Idol to Ricky Morton. I mean, you can go down the line, right, of the guys that have, that have showed up and um, – I think we belong. I think we'll continue to prove we belong. I think our brand of wrestling is a little more physical than other brands of wrestling. So I'm proud to be a part of the NWA. Let's just rewind back, like Bruce Tharp era of the NWA. From then to now, do you see like it? Because obviously you're part of both, but you just see a, like a big growth of kind of where it, where it kind of is heading in the right direction, or did you like kind of the, the how Bruce had it? You, you know, you're traveling to Japan and... Well, I mean, it, it's it's almost comparing apples to oranges, two, two um, different schools of thought on leadership, both fairly effective in, in their reaching their goals. I, I can't imagine that, that Bruce Tharp had the lofty goals that that Billy Corgan holds for himself in the NWA. Um, I think Billy's a fantastic owner from a business sense. Once I separate myself from being a wrestler and just watch how he conducts business, I think he's a he's a great businessman. Obviously, he, he's a bona fide rock star, and uh, I think he's earned that title. If you can be as relevant and as powerful and as strong as he's been 
in such a similar industry, I feel like he can lead the NWA um, exactly where it needs to go in this industry. When you look back on that time with Bruce Tharp, it is great, though, like just as for a certain perspective, like not the arrangement of like, obviously, you guys are way more known now, like, you know, as far as the expansion, you fight TV and, you know, you're on pay-per-view, you got all these different shows. But at this point, great relationship with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Is that something that you, you know, you, you admire, you strive to like, OK, because I know you love working for New Japan, but oh. is that something you strive to do again? Like, hey, I wish we kind of had this uh, Oh, I, I, would, I would absolutely love to see us be partners with some of the international brands, not just New Japan, but I mean, even in New Mexico, Australia. I mean, there's lots of places that I would like to see us take the brand and co-promote. Uh, but New Japan obviously would be the favorite for me. I think I had some great success over there, built some strong relationships over there. And that style of wrestling fits what I'm capable of doing to a T. I I mean, it's... it's um, you know, it's the best, some of the best wrestling in the world. The Iron Gods, you and uh, Rob Conway were great over there too. Absolutely. And, and, and what a wonderful, fantastic, super mentor Rob Conway was for me in that time of my career. I mean, I couldn't have asked for a, a better friend, unlike Mayweather, um, to lead me and to teach me and to help me become the professional wrestler I am today. Um, uh, I just kind of wish he would have uncorked what I've become today back then because I think he could see it as the Iron Man. He just couldn't draw it out of me because I don't feel like my confidence was there yet. What are some of the best lessons he taught you as far as along the way? Show up early, stay late, work hard, listen. Don't overstep your bounds. Um, that worked real well for me early on. I think I'm, I'm still doing most of that. Uh, maybe overstepping my bounds a little more than I should from time to time. But Rob is just a fantastic mentor and teacher. Uh, as you know, he's been spending some time at the facilities down in Florida training those guys. And, and from time to time, he's down there producing live events and, and helping out. So that says, for me, that's, the, that's, um, that's just a testament to how effective he is as not only a teacher, but as a, as a wrestling mind and his psychology and, and what he brings to the table, he's one of the best in the world. Now, as far as you're saying at that point, didn't have the confidence. Why is it just, it takes a while to get some confidence when you're in the business, especially if you're not in this, you know what I mean? Does it take? Yeah, man, well, I mean, I, I think we talked about before in a conversation we had when I was wrestling in new Japan, I hadn't had 30 matches yet. I hadn't laced. Yeah, that's, that's right. I'm in right. the ring 30 to 40 times. So, you know, there's a lot of pressure on a guy to go wrestle at that time, the second biggest wrestling company in the world with some of the best technical professional wrestlers in the world and, and find your way. Uh, fortunately, uh, Lance Archer, Lance Hoyt was over there. Harry Smith was over there. Um, so I had some allies in the camp over there that really brought me along, not to mention the rivalries that I built with Kojima and Tenzan and those guys. I mean, what better people to be nose to nose with trying to figure this business out. That's right. I was thinking about that. Yeah, I knew you were young. I forgot it was only like 30 matches or so. Yeah, in. somewhere between 30 and 40. I mean, I, I'm not one of these guys that writes down every match he has, you know, like some of the guys do. No yep. disrespect to, to guys that do that. I just, I, I'm not a very good record keeper, I guess. Yeah. When they put you in there and it's only 30 matches, I mean, that's pretty much like, well, we see this big piece of clay. I was a big guy. Like, we, we like this guy. You know, it may be a little experience, but we like him so much. You know, we're the second biggest company, but we're going to use him, though. We like him. You know what I mean? That's right, right. definitely and a good sign. And I, I learned a lot, and I found my way. And um, that was a great foundation for me to experience more success beyond New Japan. When you were over there, was that strictly Bruce Star getting you over there, or was that Rob Conway getting you over to Japan? It was a combination of the two is, is, is the fairest way to put it. How does that kind of do you even know or like how that arrangement even was settled or like was it something for the NWA title they wanted the name because obviously that holds a lot of water uh, or holds a lot of weight in in Japan. Well, it, and this is just my perspective. This isn't any inside knowledge that I right. know, but I know when Rob came out of the NWA, he was a great choice for being the NWA World Champion at that time, where it was at, and and who the brand needed to lead that could do what a traditional NWA world champion could do 
Uh, he did bring a lot of value to Japan, obviously, because he wrestled several matches over there, several title defenses, even um, Wrestle Kingdom 8 or 9, one, one of the two or both even maybe, where he lost the title to Kojima uh, with myself and Tenzan ringside. So he brought value to New Japan, I think, because it was one of those scenarios where Rob is as good as he is. He looks like a million dollars. He had the WWE um, credibility behind him, and he hadn't been overexposed in Japan. He hadn't been there much. The fans hadn't seen him. Matter of fact, I'm not even sure he'd ever been over there outside of if WWE had taken him over there. So, I mean, that was a perfect fit for New Japan to bring in a new American that looks the way he does, that wrestles the style he wrestles, um, and brought a lot of credibility to the 10 pounds of gold. And it culminated over there with defending the title in front of almost 50,000 people. What do you think about the style? I know you said you like it, but what is it like about that style that fits you that you like? Is it the strong style, quote unquote? It's, uh, it's just more physical. It's 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 more physical, especially for their bigger guys, the guys that I was wrestling over there, uh, the guys that I was intertwined with. Uh, that style fits me pretty well. Just straightforward, punch in the mouth and see what happens. Do they mind? You know what I mean. Like if you're a little stiff with them, they're just stiff with you, or whatever. Snug, I guess you could say. Do they they mind that, or they they enjoy that? I mean, I think they thrive off of it. To, to be quite honest with you, yeah, I, I think they thrive off of it. I think everybody um, loses sense that this is a competition at the end of the day, and when your opponent is bringing it to you a little bit, you you have to be able to reciprocate that. Um. In, in a snug, safe manner to show you belong and, and, and you should be there. That's more my style. I like that style. I know t a lot of today's wrestlers do a lot of the acrobatics, a lot of planned spots. You know, some of them don't mesh well with that style. But for me personally, I like that that Harding style. Do you notice that too? Like there's definitely a disconnect with, with that style and a lot of what we're seeing here in the States? Well, I, I'm not sure it's a disconnect. I'm not sure that's not that's the – the right word. What we have to remember with professional wrestling and 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 my first trainer, uh, Rip Rogers, right, who is just a, a phenomenal, oh, yeah. one of the best trainers in the world. He he would continuously make the comment, um, "Professional wrestling is like Baskin Robbins. Thirty-one flavors. There's something for everyone." And, and I truly believe that. And I think a wrestling event that has a little bit of every flavor on it is best for the fans. And it also keeps different styles from having the same style match in every event, right? Because you get to have some chocolate ice cream. You get to have some vanilla. You get to have some Rocky Road, which I despise. Um, but it, everybody has a flavor they like, and it allows you to draw in more fans if you have different flavors. For me, though, like you could kind of tell – like a competition or if these guys are working on it in the back, you know what I mean? Like I always get the sense like, Oh God, they worked out all these spots. It's just, I don't know, do you notice that too? I mean, it's might be a little bit different with like NWA per, per se, but a lot well, of the stuff I mean, is like, I wow, they were working out experience all these spots in the ring to me, um, to, to, to be as respectful about it as I can. Some of it looks like a competition and wrestling and physicality. And some of it looks like a movie fight scene. Right. Um, but again, there's a lot of people pay thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to see movie fight scenes. So I'm not sure there's anything wrong with that as the business has evolved. It's just not the flavor that I like or that I'm good at serving. When you see like that kind of style, do you think it can mesh well together with, with your style? Or do you think that there's some separation there where it's, you know, not, not as, um, cohesive? I think... Any style can mesh well together if you can tell a story of good versus evil. I still think that's the simplest form of entertainment in our business, and it doesn't matter the style that you're wrestling. If you can wrestle, I mean, if we go back in history and look at all of the, the feuds to, to me that I really enjoyed or drew good money, it was good versus evil, right? I mean, it's it's the typical Rocky IV story. I mean, if you can tell the Rocky Four story, then you can you can draw money and you can entertain fans. 
That's true. It's it's very very simple, very basic, but it is true. Well, I mean, look at all the the comic book movies. It's very you, know, you got that. No, you I got mean, the Avengers, right? Why why does Marvel do so well? Why is DC gaining traction? Right, because it's the era that we grew up in being modernized, um, but it's still good versus evil. Who are some of the few that you liked, like just as a fan when you were growing up, like? Who the oh man, Savage Steamboat. I mean, probably was the first feud that really, you know, really got me. I guess you would say. And then, um, you know, if you're looking Nikita Koloff, you know, when he went from bad guy to good guy, oh my goodness! I mean, that place was nuts. If you remember that, um, I remember just loving Jake the Snake when he was a bad guy. Rick Rude is a bad guy. I mean, Scott Hall is a bad guy. Those are the guys. And it was so simple to understand who was good and who was bad. And, and that's that's what I like. And that doesn't mean I'm right. It just doesn't mean I'm wrong either. It's just what I like. Do you – or were you always a big wrestling fan? Oh, yeah. I mean, from the time that I could watch it on TV, absolutely. Saturday night's main event every third Thursday. I mean, every third Friday. 11.30 p.m. I mean, and in the days that they would advertise it and that shit wouldn't come on that night, oh, I'd be so, so <laughs> devastated, right? Because you wait all, all month for it and then it's not there. And um, I think that's one of the big differences between then and now is you're just saturated with wrestling. It's on two or three days a week. It's on every streaming service. You've got all kinds of social media where you see clips and and gifts and and segments and interviews and I mean literally you could spend all day every day watching wrestling if you're that big of a fan. Um, I'm not saying that's a terrible thing, but sometimes anticipation isn't too bad. Is it just too much wrestling? You think now? Like, is that why we're not seeing you know the 33 million people watching Saturday Night's Main Event anymore? Um. I don't I, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I like there being so much wrestling because there's a lot of guys making a living at it, right? So the more jobs there are where guys can make a living, that's a that's a good thing. Uh, in, in my perspective. However, you know, you can only drink so much water in a day, right? Even water is bad for you if you drink too much of it. So uh, I think I think we I think we don't take time to appreciate the feuds well enough to be emotionally invested in them like we were when we were younger fans. Like when Hogan turned heel, oh my goodness, right? I mean, when yeah. Hogan became a bad guy, I mean, how many millions of children did he let down? Right? I mean, I, 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 for me, the only person in the modern era that could turn like that and, and get that same kind of reaction would have been Cena because he was never a bad guy. Right. But everybody else has, has been on either side of the fence. It seems like at some point. Um, so I, I think, I just think it's so much different now because there's so many flavors. There's so many avenues to watch it uh, that, that we lose some of the magic of anticipation and waiting and seeing how things play out. But it's that way in in all entertainment now, right? You get a show, you watch, you binge watch it. I mean, you you, you block out a weekend and you watch twelve episodes in a weekend, right? You don't have to wait in on anything anymore. We're a we're a society of instant gratification where all the information we want's at our fingertips. Um, you you just have access to so much that you know t even twenty years ago you didn't have access to it like that. I always wonder if like the binge watching is good or bad you know what i mean because you you could watch them all but then there's no build-up to each well, other and, and to, to your point i don't know if you've watched um, on hbo winning time the the series about no no yeah my buddy the, was saying hey Ray the Los Angeles lakers i i don't I, i'm not as concerned about the historical accuracy of it as there's been some reports on it but as far as entertainment it was fantastic and for me having to wait a week to see What's going to happen next? Well, there was something super fantastic about that in my eyes, man. I mean, there was something 
super amazing about waiting till it come out and and knowing that on Sundays I could catch up on that latest episode. I mean that and and I made time for that. I love the show Bosch, which is on Freebie now. It's on Amazon. Okay. It follows a, a cop in, in LA. But it was funny, they would put two episodes out each week. So I was like, oh, you, you know what I mean? Like right. I almost wanted to stretch it out so it, it takes longer to get done. But of course I'd watch the two episodes and then you know, each week you watch the two. Right, right. No, and and there there again, like I said, the uh, another show that does that is my wife and my guilty pleasure too. I don't mind saying it's kind of corny. But 90 Day Fiance on TLC, right? Oh, Talk yeah. A couple million viewers every Sunday night. Why is that? Because yeah. having to wait to um, see the next episode. That's true. And I think Yellowstone, I don't think they did the streaming thing, right? So it was one episode per week. And I think it was the, they topped out. It was like 10 million viewers uh, an episode or something insane like that. Right, right, right. And another thing that, that I think in the wrestling business is, that has changed, and again, I'm not sure if this is good or bad, but you only really knew about people what the companies wanted you to know about. Them. Now, you know just about everything about everyone. I mean, so you, you know what they eat, you know what they drive, you know when they go to the bathroom. I mean, it's, it's an inundation of information. And again, I'm not sure if it's bad. I'm not sure if it's good. It's just different. It's hard to build an alternative backstory to someone when they're giving you their backstory every day, and it's nothing what the alternative backstory that an entertainment company is trying to build is. It, it's virtually impossible to be successful that way. Yeah. I feel like you can't really be larger than life because everybody pulls back the curtain and the you know the mysteriousness is gone. You know who doesn't? No aura. You know who doesn't? Who? Who? Brock Lesnar. That's true. We don't know anything, really. I mean, we know he's out there in Saskatchewan, but that's well, it. And he's a butcher. To, hard to find personal information about him, what he's doing, what he's eating, where he's going. I mean, he shares his, his hunting stuff, right? I mean, yep. which is his hobby. But you don't see a lot of, you know, you don't see 17, 18 tweets a day. You don't see 17, 18 um, social media posts a day. You just don't. So you wonder, man, he is larger than that. He's one of the only guys that's like instantly over. You know what I mean? Just just like that where he just comes back and he's just so over and, and popular. But you're right. We just know that he's a butcher and a hunter. And <laughs> right. you know, the stuff that he posts. Yeah. I like that, though, because it gives you some mystique and some aura to the guy. Right on. I agree with you. And it doesn't hurt that he's a you're probably your size, you know. He's a he's a big boy, you know, so yeah, he's got he, the look. He is, he, is yeah. a, he is a very special athlete. Have you ever crossed paths with him? No. Oh, you haven't. Okay. Interesting. Maybe maybe that needs to happen one day. You too. Uh, I wouldn't mind it, but I am extremely good friends with Shelton Benjamin, and they've crossed paths a lot. So I've got some firsthand knowledge of how special of an athlete Brock was or is. Oh yeah. It's funny, all those guys were, you know, down there with Rip for a while. Yourself, yeah. Shelton, Lesnar. It's a good good thing going on down there in OVW. Right on. How did you like when you initially just kind of rewinding back to like when you wanted to get into the business, like how did you just get in? Did they just like see you and and oh oh I'm a wrestling fan, you just jump in? Well, in, in a roundabout way, yes and no. Um I played college basketball. And my, one of my very good friends in college, his dad and teammate, uh, his father was a cameraman at the time for the WWE. His name was um, Dean Blau, Bubba Dean Blau. And he had, I had had some conversation about, hey, if you ever want to try out with WWE, I can put you in contact with the right people. Can't get you a job, can't um, get you signed, but I can put you in contact with the right people. And that's what happened. I went and worked out. I had no wrestling experience at this time. And the developmental was exactly what we talked about. Matt Morgan, Horseshoe, um, Linda Miles, Jackie, uh, Sharp, uh, Shelton had just gone up. Bro um, Rob had just gone up. Dinsmore, as Eugene, was still there. I mean, so a lot of really talented and well-seasoned guys in OVW to choose from at the time. So I was 
put in Nick Densmore's class to learn how to have the fundamentals. Within six weeks, they moved me to the contract class to start training me to wrestle. Uh, however, I had a corporate job, which was very, very flexible for me. And I'm still in that industry today. I've been able to maintain um, that career with all my wrestling. So now I'm an executive for a major manufacturer and I'm able to balance both. Uh, so I wasn't able to, um, to sign a contract with WWE because of my corporate position. And I, I still feel like things have worked out pretty well for me. Wow, that's kind of like amazing to think like, wow, he did the P, but then you had the corporate stable job. So it's hard to just give that up. Right. Well, and, and at the time, uh, WWE went through some changes. It was the, one of the first times that Dr. Tom Pritchard was released from the company before they brought him back. And then while he was released, my mother got sick with lung cancer. So I stopped wrestling totally, moved back to Chattanooga uh, to Bakewell to have my family take care of my mom. She got better from lung cancer the first time. Then I moved to Texas, taking a corporate job, transferring within my company as a corporate job out to Texas. Uh, then once I got to Texas, I hadn't been wrestling for about four or five years. And then I went to a small independent show uh, to kind of get my feet wet again to see if I how much I missed it. And the rest is history. Next thing you know, uh, Bruce Stark buys the NWA, and we're in New Japan. What's the relationship like with Bruce? Is it strictly business, or, or are you actually friends with Bruce, and he's kind of bringing you along? We have uh, – back then, it was sort of strictly business, um, but we have a really good friendship now that there's no wrestling tied to it. Um, I think it was a scenario where we just – weren't always on the same page wrestling and it caused some friction between us personally from time to time. But since he stepped out of the wrestling business, he's been nothing but supportive and, and a great friend um, along the way. Cause his dad was an announcer for the business, right? Yeah. Like, so he, he's been in the business for a long time. Yeah, he, he was a referee down in Florida and, and um, you know, he's got some pretty, pretty strong friendships. I know he's really good friends with Terry Funk. Um, he's got some really strong friendships out there. Kevin Sullivan and Bruce are real good friends. So, um, you know, he took a lot of flack over some NWA stuff when, during his tenure, but he really does love the business. Excuse me, he's passionate for the business. And um, he's raised two beautiful kids. Uh, his son just graduated high school. So I think it just gets to a point where uh, he's focusing more now on his law firm stuff and, and what he's doing out there and, and raising his family and he couldn't be a better father. And, and I'm fairly sure his law offices are doing pretty successful too. Things are going well for him. Now he sold the, the Houston NWA, like Paul Bosch tape library too, right? He, as far as you know, like, I don't think, yeah, he I, I, I think that was part of the deal when, when, Oh, and Billy the, bought it. Yeah. When it all went down, I don't know the intricate details of it. Just kind of, yeah, probably the same stuff you've heard along the way is this went with it. This didn't, or, or this was a deal breaker, or this wasn't, but eventually they came together, and, and, and I'm glad they did. Uh, I'm really glad they did. What did you think about like how some of those controversies, not to get too into it, but how some of those controversies were handled with uh, you know, with Bruce and the title at one point? Like, Were you just, I don't know, were you okay with the way everything, kind of how it uh, boiled down? Well, the thing you, 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 you have to understand is, there, there's three sides to every story, right? There, there's the good side. There, there's side A, side B. The truth probably falls somewhere in the middle. Um, I have never personally had an issue with any of the parties involved. I mean, and, and if it's the, the issues that I think you're talking about, I think everybody's gone on to have really successful careers from that time period. And all every everybody that was involved in that, is super professional, super respectful. They've always been good friends friends to me as well. Um, from Dave Marquez to Adam Pierce to Colt Cabana to, I mean, those guys ha have always treated me fantastic. Adam's a close personal friend. Um, Dave Marquez and I bounce ideas off each other from time to time. Um, I like what he's doing with championship wrestling in Hollywood. You know, he was part of the NWA the first few seasons. I feel like I don't know this for sure, but I think he was a pretty good advocate for me coming back in down there. 
And um, yeah, I'd, I've got no other will towards any of those guys on either either side. I just I just think <laughs> shit just kind of works out the way it's supposed to in the long run, right? Right. It's funny, like the way it happened at this point with New Japan, because they create the relationship with New Japan, but the NWA titles out there. Then all of a sudden, when Conway's champion, then you get like the the Kojima feud with him. Mm -hmm. Conway wins it back. Then you get a Tenzan feud. I mean, two of the best ever as far as the Japanese contingent, really. Anyway, to just great he, work. He got, he got to wrestle Liger with as the champion. Yeah, it, it, it was a it was good. So obviously, Bruce had some great connection with New Japan, but then. Tenzon wins the title back from Conway, and that's where you kind of enter the fold. I think he had like a 200-day reign, so it was a good reign. But then you come in, you know, you beat Tenzon, you were become champion, I believe it was for like 420 days. So you were champion for a long time, NWA World Champion. Yeah, for about 420 days, I won the title in San Antonio, Texas. Pretty special night for me, obviously, because I, I won the, the NWA World title. A couple of side notes, my wife. Now, it was the first time she ever come to watch me wrestle, brought her son. So that was kind of special. Uh, we were still in the very preliminary stages of, of knowing each other at that time. We're married now. Um, Scott Norton came over uh, as a special guest of mine because I felt like that the least we could do would be bring Scott in for the event, let him be as involved as he wanted to be, uh, because of his relationship with Tenzon, they were real good friends. And I didn't want to, I wouldn't have been able to um, look Scott in the eye had we had Tenzon in San Antonio, Texas, and he's over in Houston, and we don't make a, at least extend an offer for him to, to come. And he helped agent that match, and, and I'll, let, I'll forever be grateful for Scott for that. What was it like that night beating Tenzon, who's a legend, but being the NWA world champion and winning it? What were the emotions like? Oh, man, it was crazy because I had been injured. I was coming off shoulder surgery. It was my first match back having torn my rotator cuff in my leg room. So I'd been out for about 15 weeks. I had intensive, intensive rehab. Um, Ray Rowe or Eric the Viking, right, from the War Raiders, or um, was my roommate at the time. We lived together off and on quite a bit there in Texas. And he helped me push through some rehab and get back in shape. So, um, you know, just winning the title that night was, was as special as you would imagine it to be. Building was packed um, in a super historic building, Woodlawn Gym there in San Antonio where Shawn Michaels used to have his events at when he ran Texas. So, I mean, it's just, just a lot of history there, uh, a lot of good people in the building. And, and um, man, it meant a lot to me. When you're NWA champion, is that like holy crap? Like Ric Flair or Harley Race? I mean, it it, it it holds a lot of prestige. Well, absolutely, it does. And and my whole goal as the NWA World Champion was to carry myself in a way. Um, at the end of the day, where any champion, any NWA champion before me or after me, after me, could look at how I carried myself as the champion and and think it was respectful and be proud of that. When you win the title, is that like a lot of pressure? Because you look, like you said you just came back from the shoulder injury. Like you said, like oh man, I, I got like I'm not 100, percent but I got to carry this thing and I got to carry the company. Well, yeah, I mean, and and Rob had done such a pretty solid job doing that, right? Yeah. And then Kojima, then Tenzan, and and then you know where do you you know who you, who you win it from matters, and who you lose it to matters. I got to win it from one of the wrestling legends um, in all of professional wrestling. If you look at Tenzon's resume, it, it, you can put his resume against anybody's, right? I mean, for what he's accomplished in professional wrestling. And then who you lose it to matters, and I lost to Tim Storm. And as a human being, Tim Storm is one of the best people I've known, met, or ever been around in this business. And I was grateful to be able to pass it on to him. What did you think about, because Billy at that point is going to be taking over and his company bought the, the NWA. Are you thinking like, wow, you know, like not why not me, but whoa, how come, you know, you want to go this direction? Like, did you ever think about that? Like, how come I'm not champion in this new, not new venture, but this new part, this new chapter? Well, Billy wasn't even close to involved when I lost it to Tim. Um, oh, he wasn't. Okay. 
No, no, that was we're, we're that was Tim's and, champion, but it was after. Yes, and, okay. and, and Tim was a deserving champion, and he did a great job in the build with Aldous. I mean, I I, I think he did a fantastic job. Um, so I, I think that's wonderful. I'm really happy for Tim and that. And not one time do I think, oh, well, what if that was me? Uh, during that time, um, I wasn't even sure I was going to wrestle again for the NWA. Uh, they had some guys in the leadership position that I didn't necessarily want to work for, uh, for whatever reason. And I dabbled in it a little bit, but didn't fully commit. Then some changes were made. I had an opportunity to to wrestle Tim again over there for Billy. Uh, just had a happen chance. Somebody that was supposed to be there, Mr. Fly, allegedly. So I ended up in that spot. Had a great event that night. And then um, was able to come on board with, with Crimson after the fact of that. And then they've been there since and been extremely happy. Really happy with the internal workings of NWA um, as far as Pat Kenny, Simon Diamond, um, all the agents from Homicide to Jazz to Austin Idol being there to Ricky Morton being there. Uh, it, it's just been, you know, the talent relations guys and Kyle Davis and Joe Galley are great to work with. It's, it's just a good environment, and it, it wasn't always that. And now that it is, I'm happy to be there. Do you like that, you know, obviously the, the pandemic is pretty much hopefully in, in the rear view for, for, for forever. Uh, but do you like that? Okay. You guys are going to be out touring more because you know, that, that held you guys back, I think from, from real growth. Yeah. I, th I think if we would have been able to get on the road a little earlier than we have been, it would, um, there, there would have been some extra traction made there, but look, I mean, you can, you can sit around and, and say, what if, what if, what if, or you can get your shit together and go put on great events and work your ass off and, and draw fans to your product. And I think that's what we're doing. If you think about it, it's like, okay, hopefully, you know, the stuff like that is behind you, but hopefully that means you could travel more and hit different markets and, and just really just expand the brand. Right. I mean, that that's kind of the, gotta be the ultimate goal, run right. more shows. Right. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and, and I think that is the plan. I, obviously I don't know the inner workings of everything that's going on with, with, with the office stuff. Uh, I'm, not involved with that at all, uh, but NWA is my priority, and that's where I want to be. What kind of like leader would you say Billy is? Like, how would you describe him as, as the, the leader of the NWA? Um, man, what's the best way to put it? He 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 gives you his expectations, and then for the most part, he he gets the fuck out of the way and lets you go do what you're hired to do as a professional. Now, if there's certain things he wants you to get across or, or wants you to to exploit, he'll, he'll let you know, uh, which has been great for me in, in, a, in a roundabout way, right, because he's, he's pretty creative and, and really talented. But he doesn't micromanage at all, and at the end of the day, everything's going to be okay. We'll figure it out. And that's, that's a great environment to be in. No, I'm not saying you, but like, just say maybe some other guys. Anybody get starstruck? You know what I mean? It's like, holy shit, Billy Corgan. Uh, no, nah, man. Is that ever a problem or no? No, because when he's back there, he's just one of us. I mean, I know that sounds so cliche, right? And But he's so approachable. Like, there's no, oh, uh, should I talk to him? Shouldn't I talk to him? And that goes from the very top of the roster to the, to the very bottom of the roster. I mean, he's got a pretty much – an open door policy where you can stick your nose in and, and get his feedback. And he, um, it, it, it's funny you say starstruck, right? Cause what's old is new and so yep. on. So I've got a niece that's, that's 17. She pitches for a uh, private school in, in Chattanooga and she's really, really talented and she's going to come to the <laughs> June 11th event. And she was like, Hey, by the way, think you could introduce me to Billy Corgan? And I was like, hold on, you know who Billy Corgan is? You're 17. She's like, oh, yeah, Smashing Pumpkins. They're super hot right now. I'm like, really? But, okay, that's fantastic, right? Because that's just more eyes on, on what he's doing. So it's strange to me that – not strange. That's not the right word. But it, it's – it's. I don't even know the word. It's just weird to me that she sees him as this superstar rock star 
And I think to myself, well, I probably should. And I do if we were in his element of being the right. superstar rock star, right? But he doesn't carry that around with him when he's when he's backstage with us. He's he's an approachable boss that doesn't micromanage, that that's pretty funny and likes to to have a good time making a product, building a product. I interviewed him a few months ago and I was surprised. I thought like, okay, we'll probably talk about a little bit of wrestling. We'll talk about some music, but man, I didn't realize we took like zero music. He was it's like, he's such a big wrestling fan. And yes. yeah, he's talking to me about Ron Garvin and Harley race and right. like old school guys. Like I didn't realize he was such a big fan. I knew obviously he was a fan, but not that yeah, like, no, he, he is. Fan, fan isn't really the right word for it. I think uh, Historian. Student, student, maybe. I mean, he, he understands it. He gets it. He, he, uh, and, and from my perspective, he seems to like good versus evil. That's, you know, so. It, yeah, it, he's old school almost. Yeah. Even though they, it, old school's new school, it's just, or it should be, but very yeah. old school thinking. You know, and he has so much respect for those three letters, that brand, right? Which, rightfully so. I mean, he, he should have that much respect for it. It's revered. It's the oldest wrestling brand. In, in the country today and it's it's still amazing that it's doing as well as it is and that i'm a part of it now as far as kind of like what's next for you i know we were kind of saying obviously you got the pay-per-view like what else like outside of, of wrestling like are or is, is there other goals you have other aspirations like what else do you got coming up um not i mean not wrestling wise no I, i'm exactly where i want to be uh Part of that is I love the NWA product. Part of it is it continues to let me uh, continue my corporate career in the fashion that it's in. I don't mind telling you I work for a major manufacturer. I'm responsible for half of the United States. Two or three people report to me. I travel, um, I travel 200 days a year. Uh, I'm in an airport every week. I'm in a hotel every night. I still find time to go train. I still find time to make events. I still try to find time to be a, a great, try to be a great husband and a great father and a, and a great uncle to my nieces. I've got two that, that I absolutely adore, both of them. One of them 17, one of them's two and a half. And, um, you know, so it's, my life is pretty fucking solid right now. You know, all, all, all things considered. Now you're saying you're you're on the road a lot. How do you kind of stay in shape? So I, I always kind of think that of the guy. It's like, how do you stay? Because you don't have to, like, it's not your gym. It's like, you know, you know, it's like your food necessarily. Like, how do you do it like on the road? But it is, you you, you pack your food and you take okay. it with you, at least part of it. And then you just make good decisions, man. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm not a bodybuilder, so I don't, you know, I have to be super crazy about it. But I, I do like to be quasi in shape for what we're doing. So, you know, you just grill chicken salad. You just make smart decisions, right? You can have, for me, I can have a beer or a whiskey or a moonshine from time to time. It's, it's not the end of the world. I'm not going to not enjoy life because of the way I've got to, to eat and prepare. But I don't miss workouts. I mean, whether it be if my meetings start at 7.30, I'm in the gym at 4. If, if my meetings are going to end earlier in the day, maybe I go in the evening. But even when I'm on the road, I find a way. I mean, you, you find a way. There's gyms in every city in the in the world and for the most part i've been doing it so long now that i have my gyms on the road right and i will schedule my workouts if i'm training five days a week and i know i'm going to be on the road for three days or maybe i'll just train one of those days that i'm on the road and take two off days while i'm traveling and then travel i mean then train all week when i'm home you just you just you do it i mean that's just the thing there's you know, some nights you don't get a lot of sleep, and sometimes you get up at 3 o'clock in the morning so you can make a 5 a.m. or 5.30 flight, but that's just what we do. I mean, that's the that's the path I've chosen, so bitching about it ain't going to, to make it any easier or any better. I mean, your mindset on how you approach it is everything, and I just feel really lucky to be able to wrestle at one of the highest levels in the world and still maintain an executive career um, where – once wrestling is done, I'll be able to maintain my lifestyle and to continue to be successful. You don't like measure out your food and all that stuff, do you? Like oh, you, yeah. know, you weigh it? Oh, you do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I it's funny. My meals are 
four ounces of chicken and a cup of green beans. That's my standard go-to. Wow. That's it? Yeah. I eat that four or five times a day and then a couple shakes, give or take. Breakfast is three egg whites, two whole eggs, a cup of oatmeal, and um, four ounces of beef. Do you ever get tired of, of the same same old, same old? Nah. It's just what you do. It's a routine. Um, but again, I mean, my wife and I, we enjoy life. We go to dinner. We, you know, a couple times a week, we make sure that we make time for ourselves and, and our marriage and our relationship and try to put enough energy into that to make sure it stays special and healthy and everything it should be. Now you said down the road though, you have your gyms. That's just from literally traveling so much. You literally like, yep, I'm staying at this hotel. I know yep. the gym. Like really that's easy. Oh, uh, exactly. When I'm in Houston, I know where I'm going. When I'm in Los Angeles, I know where I'm going. When I'm in Albuquerque, I know where I'm going. That always fascinates me with wrestlers just because I'm, I'm always thinking like, but they're not home. It's like, they're not, it's not like they're home base. Like in my head, I'm thinking like, well, I know my gym is here. I know where to eat. You know what I mean? I know. No, it's just, uh, I mean, weights are weights, right? Right. It's funny. I get tickled at guys. They'll, they'll giggle at Planet Fitness from time to time. Like, oh, you can't. Bullshit. You hear you can do anything at Planet Fitness um, that you can do at Gold's. The only difference is that you've got to be a little more respectful how you carry yourself at Planet Fitness. That's all. Right. Right. Maybe maybe dodge a, a few more people that aren't as accustomed to working out as some of the other crowd might be, right? But Right. If that's your biggest challenge, you're still winning. Yep. Do you ever find it like a problem, like staying in shape on the road, or you're so disciplined that, that that's never a problem? No, because what happens to me, man, is occasionally, and I'm sure this happens to all of us, is right, you fall off the wagon and one day turns into two, two turns into three, three turns into four. Next thing you know, you've been eating like shit for seven, eight days, and then you really got to dial it back and really get focused for 15, 20 days, and then so it's a never-ending cycle. That's why – so special when you see some of these guys that just are in great condition year round, right? Um, these guys they they're extremely dedicated to um, to being successful with how they take care of themselves. Because I've seen some guys where they're like injured, and like they come back and all of a sudden you know they're jacked, they're ripped, they're huge, they're in such great shape. Then you on the road, and then all of a sudden it's like, ah, eh, they're a little, you know, not pudgy, but you know they're getting a little bigger. They're not as in great shape. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, because when you're coming yeah. off an injury, most of the time you've got everything you need in your city. You're sleeping in your bed. You're preparing your food. You got your supplements. You you got everything you need. And um, there there's an there's a even for a guy like me that's 12, 13 years into this, 10, 12, 13 years into this, if you go away for a little bit, when you come back, there's a little bit of an excitement even for myself to come back better than the way I left. And I think that happens for everybody, right? Like it's almost like a re-debut. The last thing you want to do is re-debut worse than you left. Yeah. Uh, yep. So I think it, yeah. becomes, it gives you a little bit of more of a goal to work for on a day daily basis at least my psychology that's that's the way my brain works and the fans would be like that's not how i remembered him you know what right. i mean like you, you you want to come back strong right for sure so as you go for the wind down here we head towards the finish just naturally i'm always thinking in my head like favorite matches so somebody goes to youtube they want to make a youtube playlist they want to put jack stain in jack stain versus who like who should they put on the youtube playlist for some favorite matches oh man my favorite oh. um Obviously, the Tenzan match because it's Tenzan, right? Yeah. Uh, the New Japan stuff, wrestling with Conway was fun. It would be fun to go back and for guys to watch to see how far we've progressed from there. Uh, I had some great matches with, with Mayweather and Crimson as, as a tag. Uh, Crimson and I wrestled Lashley and King Mo at AML. That's fun. And then all of the NWA stuff we've been doing has been pretty good stuff all the way around. So, yeah, just whatever you can find out there, just click on it and watch it. As far as, you know, some guys who haven't wrestled, some dream matches, quote-unquote, that are out there, who are some guys that you'd like to wrestle that you have never wrestled before? Mm, Aldis, Trevor. I've wrestled Trevor in a tag-ish scenario, but never wrestled. Trevor, um, Adonis, Chris, 
that's going to be a big one for me. Uh, what if we if we slide outside of the NWA? Mm-hmm. I'd like to wrestle Ricky Starks again. I think he's on a rocket ship. I love everything he does. Um, you know, just just the cliche matches. Every it, it's funny because I hate it when guys say, "Oh, I'd love to wrestle Brock." Well, no shit. Everybody would love to wrestle Brock, right? Or it's you kind of got to earn that, and I don't think I've earned that. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, big, strong, powerful dudes, man. I want to get in there and see how I stack up. Doesn't matter who they are. Is there any companies out there that you know? Obviously, you're working for the NWA, but are there any out there because this like forbidden door, aka like everybody can work anywhere? It just seems like is there some companies you'd like to work for? Not to say leave the NWA, you still could be there, but other organizations you'd like to just uh, throw your weight around in? Mm-hmm. Not while I'm working with NWA. No, I I, I want to be at NWA. That's where I want to wrestle. That's who I want to represent. Um, now, if NWA wants to send me somewhere, New Japan, then yeah, I'd, I'd love to do that. But you know, I'm when you're happy driving the car you're driving, you don't go buy a new one. Some guys in New Japan you would like to wrestle, if possible. Oh man, yeah, I'd like to swing back through. Obviously, Okada again. I wrestled him in a tag match years ago. Tanahashi again. Um, Kojima again. Liger again. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Um, there's there's some guys over there that I, that I would really like to Naito again yeah I mean I've, I've a lot of their really strong wrestlers I've wrestled and, and I'd like to do it again but now you got all the experience and the confidence I'd love to see that those be, it'd be a little different approach this time that's for sure yeah you'd be a little uh, more comfortable yeah well and, and I would like to wrestle Chase Owens I would like to wrestle Jeff Cobb. I mean, I wrestled Jeff before. Uh, I love his style. I love the way he wrestles. Um, Jacob Fatu, I think, is special. I think he, he's fantastic. Uh, Charlie Haas, again, right? I mean, being able to, to, to wrestle Charlie, who's one of the best technical wrestlers, violent, physical, promos are great. I, I would love to wrestle Charlie again. Rodney Mack again. I mean, Tim Storm again. I mean, there's a lot of guys I, I just I, I like physical, strong, grown men, and that's what I'd like to do. As far as just you and in the business, any regrets that you've had in the business? No, none. No, I, I don't believe in regrets, man. I don't. I think we all make choices, and I think along the way, it's just a life path that you've chosen. If you sit around and regret that shit, you're you're not going to live in the moment and and really embrace where you're at now. The the biggest regret that I have, if you could call it a regret, was I didn't really enjoy wrestling at New Japan because I was so green is the, the right term that I couldn't enjoy the experience because I was so worried about having to perform, if that would make sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's like the first time you drive a race car, right? You, you, but by the time you win a couple of championships and, and you're Jeff Gordon in it, it's probably pretty fun to drive around the, around the track, right? Um, so just being able to make some of those loops again with the confidence and the ability that I have now where I can soak in the experience more rather than just be there to, to wrestle. Now, give us one last final push for the big uh, PPV coming up. Always ready. Uh, I, I couldn't understand you. What? One last big push for the pay per view. Always oh, ready. Yeah, man. I mean, look at the card, right? It, it, it's fantastic. And and I'm even laying in wait, I guess, to see. I mean, Cardona tweeted out today that he tore his bicep. I've been down that road. I know what that feels like. So, what's that going to do to the card, if anything? I mean, I think it's going to uh, add some mystique to it. But there's there's some I mean you can run down the card if you want to. There's some great matches that night. Oh yeah. It's going to be a, a blast in Knoxville, Tennessee, where the NWA has been extremely successful in years past. So being able to go over there uh, with Ricky Morton on the card is gonna be pretty fantastic. Yeah, that is awesome. 
Good stuff. Always ready. Big pay-per-view coming up on the 11th for the NWA. But before we let you go, give us all the uh, social media for the Dane event. Oh, man. Fantastic. Uh, Instagram is Jax underscore Dane. Uh, Twitter is the Jax Dane. And you can find me on Facebook at J Dane, J Dane Lehman. Um, I would love and appreciate your follows. And, um, man, just looking forward to June 11th uh, and retaining and still the NWA national champion. Great stuff, Jax. Thank you again, as always. Appreciate all the time. Thank you.